WrestleMania 36, such a big card that we can't get it all done in one night. Two nights this weekend, Saturday night, Sunday night for WrestleMania 36. Both nights, the card will start at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific time. And we're going to break down four of the top matches with one of the best coming up in just a moment. But first, a quick note, if you've yet to become a member, over at DocSports.com. It's a real cool way to give it a trial run. You click on the link below the video and you get yourself set up for that free $60 account. You can use that on any of our daily packages, any handicapper over at DocSports.com. And again, this will be great when the sports world gets back to normal. And there are some guys out there who are handicapping and betting horse racing, uh, some soccer, so you can certainly use it on their uh, picks also. I uh, wanted to mention as we get started with WrestleMania 36, I cannot believe it's been 36 years since Andre the Giant handed over the reins of the company, the organization, to Hulk Hogan, one of the most memorable events of my lifetime. I was just a teen. I think the guy I'm about to bring on with us here was probably, uh, oh, I don't know, two or three years old at the most. And uh, his name, of course, Rafael Esparza, one of the most respected odds makers in Las Vegas and elsewhere for many, many years now, aficionado when it comes to the WWE and combat sports, I guess you could say, or in this case, sports entertainment. First question, Rafael, before we jump into the matches, I got to ask you, what is the biggest difference between setting odds for, let's say, the MMA or boxing as opposed to pro wrestling where you've got scripted results? Well, it's easy to say that because people think these wrestlers know, especially at WrestleMania, that the outcomes are already set when they even get to the arena. Some of these outcomes are not even set until they actually walk into their match, or sometimes the referee will tell them before the match starts, hey, uh, you're going to win this match. That's why the biggest advantage, when The Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar, I don't know how many years ago, Lesnar was a double-digit underdog, and Vince McMahon and Undertaker fought backstage because Vince McMahon did not want The Undertaker to lose. And Undertaker said, I want Brock Lesnar to beat my streak. So they didn't tell Brock Lesnar until Undertaker walked into the ring and said, hey, you're winning this match. Uh, and I'll tell you when you can do your finishing move or whatever. Let's play, let's play around. So now that pretty much set WWE pay-per-view uh, underdogs to room because now they're just so tight-lipped because they want that uh, shock and awe, especially at WrestleMania. Well, you set me up for the perfect segue. Let's start with that match. It's the Boneyard match. It is the Undertaker against AJ Styles. You've got Undertaker minus 400. These are the lines that Raphael set. AJ Styles plus 300. Your thoughts on this particular match? Yeah, I made Undertaker the, the favorite here just because he wasn't there last year at WrestleMania. He took the day, the night off, maybe a senior citizen night off. But let's face it, he's older than both of us probably put it together, but he's still in there. I think the Undertaker wins. He can afford uh, – AJ Styles can afford to lose this match and still have some uh, value on TV, especially either on Fridays, on SmackDowns, or Monday Raw. I think uh, Vince McMahon will give the Undertaker a W. This one right here, this match is going to be so much different with no crowd. Because let's face it, when the Undertaker's uh, lights go out and the, and the bell rings and the smoke comes out, the crowds go nuts. It's going to be very interesting to see with no crowd effect when the Undertaker comes out. Ripley, Rhea Ripley taking on Charlotte Flair in the NXT Women's Championship. Ripley about a buck 80 favorite. Uh, Flair on the comeback plus a dollar forty, and I got to ask you, Raphael, because Ripley's the next big thing in, in the women's division. We know that, uh, but name value means so much in anything we're talking about uh, as far as business is concerned, especially in the WWE. Is Flair's name value enough to knock off the next big thing in women's wrestling? How can you say Flair about going woo? But I think it, it could be here on this one. I totally agree with you. If this, if, if the circumstances that we're in right now with the world, with the COVID-19, I think this outcome is totally different. I think Rhea Ripley would have won this match, even though she is a favorite at minus 180. I think she loses. I think the, the world that we're in right now, they need those names to carry each other's sports, uh, MMA, wrestling, entertainment. I think Charlotte Flair, plus 140, I think it's a good value bet as an underdog. The public's going to bet Rhea Ripley. I think she goes all the way up to minus $2 before this match goes. This match is rumored, rumored to be the main event on Saturday, which is the main event we'll probably talk about a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to say underdogs here. Woo! Charlotte Flair wins. Give me that plus 140. How about woo? And I got to do the walk. I don't know if it can be caught on screen, but I got to do the walk. The nature boy. 
Is he going to be in her corner? I mean, is there going to be some interference? Uh, no. So the, the way his health is, they do not want uh, Ric Flair to leave the house. Same thing with Roman Reigns. Uh, that he's that he's wow. not going to be at WrestleMania because their health. So uh, Charlotte Flair won't have her dad at the arena. Good point. We got Shayna Baszler taking on Becky Lynch. That is the Raw Women's Championship. And Baszler right at a buck eighty. Lynch come back plus a dollar forty. I'm just wondering, and I've, I've seen other people talking about this match that are close to the WWE, saying basically that you know, can you really build up somebody like Baszler, and then all of a sudden have her lose this particular match? Uh, and then, of course, we saw what happened about a month and a half ago when she took a chunk out of the back of Lynch's head. Your thoughts on this match? Yeah, this is why another reason why I like Charlotte because I think one NXT lady will lose and one NXT lady will win. And this right here, Baszler is going to be on Monday Night Raw. She'll probably switch over brands after this match. And Becky Lynch has held the belt for over 365 days. We all know that she beat Ronda Rousey in last year's WrestleMania to be the champ. She drops the belt this way. I think Baszler, they set her up for a nice feud. Uh, I heard Becky Lynch is probably going to be out for a while for a little maybe short vacation. All that We all know she's dating Seth Rollins, so they're engaged. So maybe they'll give her some time off to maybe set up her wedding. But Baszler wins this match. Here's another one. I can guarantee you, this one I'm hearing, it's going to be on Sunday. Would not be shocked if Baszler gets bet all the way up to either minus 260 or higher. And then, of course, we've got – and i got to ask you, what are the odds that the Raw WWE Championship between McIntyre and Lesnar is the main event on Sunday? It's probably the big – it has to be the big event just because, and let's face it, with all these people being gone, no Roman Reigns. I heard Roman Reigns and both Goldberg were supposed to be that last match, and they give Reigns the belt after coming back from his cancer and all that. But now since he's not here – Give it to Lesnar and give it to uh, uh, Drew McIntyre. McIntyre minus 350, the pretty heavy favorite. Lesnar plus 260. And when this fight was originally scheduled before the virus took its toll, uh, it was going to be at the Raymond James Stadium. It was going to be a packed house, obviously, fans going up. And I heard a lot of people thinking it was next to a no-brainer that McIntyre was going to leave the ring victorious. Has this changed because it's in an empty arena? You don't have the crowd situation. Did this change things for you as far as setting the odds on this fight? Yeah, because when I set this number up, I would say maybe before they started canceling events, we had WrestleMania uh, events up. I had McIntyre probably close to almost minus $5 just because of the push that they were giving him to be the next champion. Now, Again, the times we're in, and maybe Brock Lesnar can bring more uh, raw audience in with their tapings. Would not be shocked if grabbed the plus 260, and that could be a good bet. I still think they give Drew McIntyre maybe the W, but I, I'm going to guarantee you now, I'm waiting to see. If I get Brock Lesnar at 3-1 to because the public's going to bet Drew McIntyre, I'm taking Brock Lesnar at 3-1 to because I think it was a good bet because, again, WWE is looking for TV ratings for Raw and SmackDown. No offense to Drew McIntyre, but Brock Lesnar brings in ratings. And eventually, if Lesnar does get the win, doesn't it set something up down the road when we get fans in attendance uh, again? Yeah, I, I, I can see that maybe at a SummerSlam. Maybe they can have Lesnar lose to Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. Hopefully, we're back into some kind of normalcy in the dead of uh, July or August. One real quick prop I wanted to mention, and it takes place – in this fight, you said it. It was McIntyre, uh, Clayman kicks, Claymore kicks, excuse me, over under one and a half. You have the over at minus 240, the under plus 180. Your thoughts? Uh, I think he'll probably go over just because I think he has to hit uh, Brock Lesnar if he wins this match with over one, I mean, easily. So that means two would win it. Uh, but And I think Brock Lesnar, F5, has bet that over one and a half as well because I think uh, Lesnar is going to probably give him more than uh, a two or three F5. So it's going to be interesting. I think both overs have to be the good bet. But the, I posted that prop and under action came in right away. So maybe those WWE fans know something that I don't know. Favorite fight to bet on the card? What do you like? Uh, probably uh, the Randy Orton uh, Edge fight. Edge is one of my favorite uh, wrestlers just because uh, I love his nickname, uh, the Rated R Superstar. Uh, so I'm going to probably root for that one. He's he's come back with a, a not one but two broken necks, retired because he couldn't do it anymore, and and proved the doctors and everybody wrong. So I'm going to be rooting for Edge on that one. But I'm not going to lie. 
Uh, Brock Lesnar and McIntyre would be good, but uh, this could be Undertaker's last WrestleMania. And it's a shame that we, this is the WrestleMania we might not see him anymore with no fans in the stands. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to go with Lesnar. Nice, big, juicy underdog. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Baszler. I think we're going to set her up for the win at minus a buck 80. And then I'm going to come back with, woo, Charlotte Flair, baby. My third pick on this card. I'm leaving the other match alone with AG Styles. That sounds good. All right. He's Rafael Esparza. We're going to be doing these videos. Oh, gosh. Weekly, we're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. And you can check out his work over at DocSports.com, all the odds uh, that he comes up with. I mean, some really interesting, fun stuff over at DocSports.com. It's all free. Raphael, enjoy the fight card Saturday and Sunday. Appreciate your time. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thanks, God. And everyone out there, please stay I think what he was saying there was, please stay healthy with the audio cut out. But he's Raphael Farza. I'm Scott Sprite. So let's enjoy WWE. Stay home. Watch the fights. Stay healthy. And don't forget that $60 free account, DocSports.com, all you got to do is click on the link below the video.